Big thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. So a few months ago, I posted the first video of my little RC hydrofoil. It has three underwater wings, and the pitch of each of them is controlled with a servo. In theory, this should make it possible to control the attitude and altitude of the vessel. In my first video, I only had the hydrofoil pitch servos connected to a normal RC receiver, which allowed me to manually control them with my remote controller, but there was no automatic stabilization going on at all. As expected, the vessel was pretty unstable and I was not able to manually control its attitude or altitude at all. And then it lit on fire, which was hilarious. Oh, so after that, it was time to install an Ardu Pilot flight controller to see if its IMU sensor and microprocessor could do a better job of stabilizing the craft than I could. So first, let's talk about how the flight controller is set up and what it's doing. Fundamentally, this vessel is just an airplane flying underwater. The first two hydrofoils can be thought of as elevons, like those on a delta wing. These can control the pitch and roll of the vehicle. The rear hydrofoil is like an elevator, and it just controls the pitch of the vehicle. Since these control surfaces are no different than an airplane, the Ardu Pilot flight controller should have no problem at stabilizing the pitch and roll of the vehicle. So then I headed out to the lake for a test. As expected, the attitude of the vehicle was much more stable than it was during my initial test with manual control. Attitude meaning pitch and roll. However, you can see there's still a big problem with the altitude control. The vessel just goes back and forth between being fully out of the water and fully submerged, with the pontoons touching the water. It's nearly impossible for me to manually keep it in the middle. Now remember, this is an airplane flight controller, and it can control the altitude of an airplane, but to do this it uses barometric pressure sensor and GPS. Unfortunately, these two measurements are not precise enough to keep our dear little hydrofoil within two or three inches of the water's surface, so we need a more precise altitude control measurement. Coincidentally, this is the exact same problem that Sebastian and I set out to solve with our ground effect vehicle projects. To aid our aircraft in staying close to the ground, we ended up adding some extra control loops that read the distance reading from a LiDAR rangefinder that was pointed straight down, and used it to control the throttle and elevator. This ended up working pretty well, but at its best, the precision was around plus or minus 15 centimeters, which would not be enough to keep the hydrofoil riding at the right altitude. Its legs are only 17 centimeters tall, so our window of acceptable altitude is pretty narrow. So fingers crossed that our custom ground effect code will work better on water than it did in the air. I installed an MB1644 sonar sensor on some chopsticks hanging out over the front and had it control the throttle and the hydrofoil pitch. I chose sonar instead of lidar this time because it's supposed to work better over water. One of the cool things about having all three hydrofoil wings controllable is that we should be able to control the altitude of the vessel without changing its pitch. How neat is that? This is unlike an airplane where if you want to change the altitude with the elevator, the whole aircraft is going to have to pitch up or down. So now back to the lake to test our new sonar control loop. Upon throttling up and flipping the ground effect mode switch, magic ensued. Oh my god, it actually works. I could hardly believe that it just worked with no tuning or anything. I was so amazed. So just like I said before, Ardu Pilot is using the IMU sensor to keep the vessel level. This is just like normal fly-by-wire A mode. Then the sonar rangefinder reading is also factoring in and the actuators are adjusted accordingly. When the vessel starts to get too low, the throttle is increased and the hydrofoils pitch up. When the vessel gets too high, the throttle is decreased and the hydrofoils pitch down. I could even use the pitch and roll sticks on the remote controller to manually control the attitude of the vehicle, with angle limits set so that it wouldn't roll more than a few degrees in each direction. That's doing manual pitch control. Definitely have some pitch control. Here's some manual roll control. Definitely have 10 degrees of roll control. That's what I set the flight controller to. That's awesome. <laughs> In 2022, Daniel built something new, Hydro, Hydrofoil. Slicing through the waves with these, maximum efficiency, Hydro, Hydrofoil. Come on, Arju Pilot, do it. Turn that sonar into movement. Stabilize that little boat. It doesn't even need to float. Brushless motors and propellers. So much swag, this ship is stellar. Screw your yacht, it can't even fly. Not like my hydrofoil. Three 
3D printing, CNCing, cutting out those little wings Hydro, hydro foil Fiberglass and epoxy, stiffness and rigidity Hydro, hydro foil Come on flight controller, do it Remove all unwanted movement Made of sticks and foam and glue 3D printed plastic too Get rid of all that friction Satisfy your nerd addiction Throttle up full steam ahead Hydrofoil, f*** yeah! Wow, that was an amazing song. Thank you, Mr. Colin Fox. Colin just released his full RC Test Flight Bops album on Bandcamp for free. If you download it, be sure to throw him a few bucks. Now, all of this driving was without any tuning. Beforehand, I had just kind of eyeballed how much control surface movement would be needed, and set the proportional gain accordingly. The next day, I installed a little ESP01 Wi-Fi module running the ArduPilot firmware, so that I had a telemetry link to the vehicle. This would allow me to adjust all the gains remotely from Mission Planner, and hopefully tune the vehicle a bit better. Then I headed back out to the lake and did some trial and error tuning. I was able to improve performance a little bit, but it was kind of hard to tell because the water was smoother than it was the previous day. There were still some little bumps and twitches in the pitch axis, but I think this was just from sensor noise and occasional bad readings. Sonar is notorious for being noisy. The performance you see here is just about as good as it ever got. Here you see why I will probably never use hydrofoils for long range waypoint missions. They are very susceptible to catching seaweed or other crap from the water. This causes a lot of drag and really slows things down. A real buzzkill. Later that day I took it out for a rough water test. It actually did quite a bit better than I would have expected. It seemed to have a tougher time going downwind for some reason. Back in part one of this project, I was talking about how the whole point of making an actively stabilized hydrofoil instead of a passively stabilized hydrofoil was to be immune to wave height. Now, my control loop is solely relying on a single rangefinder for height control, so it's just going to follow the contour of the water surface. In theory, I could try adding some fancy filtering or combined data from multiple sensors to make the vessel immune to choppy water, but unfortunately, I never got around to that. But I did, however, get around to trying out one rangefinder for each hydrofoil. I'm using an Arduino Nano here to read each sonar distance and adjust each servo position proportionally. No IMU or RDU pilot, just rangefinders. On the first day of testing this, I did not have any luck. Ugh, seaweed. Way too much seaweed around here. Oh, f that's a lot of seaweed. The next day, I adjusted the servo endpoints and proportional gain. This actually seems to work. Definitely not nearly as smooth as the RD pilot, but for the most part, it stayed up off the water. I think the main issue here was that these smaller and cheaper sonar sensors that I switched to had very low resolution, so the entire range of acceptable altitude was like 5 increments, or 5 data points. 
so pretty bad. They also did not do as well at reading closer distances, so the data was kind of glitchy. But anyhow, it was still a fun proof of concept to try out. Until this happened. What a great way to end a project. Ah! Hey brother! You like the music in RC test flight videos? Cause I'm releasing an album! My full album is available on Bandcamp. Click the link in the description. Featuring hit songs like a chrono plan. That's the plan. The chrono plan. That's the plan. And a chrono plan too. High quality autonomous ground effect vehicle. Also, a new digitally remastered version of Little Boat Big Journey. So the world can see what a great boat. Brought to you by RC Test Flight, only on Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. And streaming now on Bandcamp. And if you don't like it, eat shit. So luckily I had my inflatable kayak in the car, but I'm slowly sinking because I discovered a small pinhole leak in the front of it. So I better get this thing quick. Oh yeah, there we go. Come here, buddy. Oh, you get over here. You've been a naughty hydrofoil. Oh, yeah. My controller's a little soggy. Let's unplug that ASAP. Oh no, my butt is wet. Recovery mission successful. On our way home. It flipped over because I was trying to high speed run and then the hydrofoils were just kind of wigging out and they just tipped it. So definitely not a speed foil. If you find hydrofoils interesting, then I can guarantee you will love the science, technology, engineering, and math courses that are offered by Brilliant. Brilliant aims to create a culture of learning around inquiry, curiosity, and openness to failure for users of all ages and knowledge levels. You can master all sorts of technical subjects with topics ranging from calculus to chemical reactions to cryptocurrency. The best way to learn anything is by doing it yourself. Learn interactively with Brilliant's fun, hands-on lessons. Interactive learning helps you learn six times more efficient than watching lecture videos. I found their courses on scientific thinking to be fascinating and fun. At first, I assumed I would breeze right through them, but I was wrong. There are some really interesting problems that seemed like basic physics, but they were things that I had never really thought about. Brilliant starts by explaining why the concept actually matters and what it's all about with interactive visuals. Rather than just solving repetitive problems, they teach you the intuitive ideas behind topics like algebra, statistics, algorithms, and much more. You'll come to understand how STEM actually works and how it's relevant to your everyday life. Join the millions of people already learning on Brilliant with a special offer just for my viewers. Head to brilliant.org slash rctestflight to get started with Brilliant's interactive lessons. The first 200 viewers will also get 20% off an annual membership. Thanks again to Brilliant for sponsoring this video.